I'm going to show very quickly how to model this uh, lid for a glass bowl. Uh, this is one I did earlier. I'm just going to kind of do it again. Uh, so it's 140 millimeters. This the bowl is 140 millimeters across, and then it's nine millimeters high. The lip of it, and the lip is slightly rounded, and the lip comes. Un this is upside down. The lip comes under the uh, the lip of the bowl about three millimeters. So what I'm going to do is uh, model the inside profile, and then need to add and then add thickness to it. Um, and we do that with a modifier. So I'll show you how it goes. Okay, so that's where it's going to start. I go Shift A. I'm going to add a mesh circle, and I need 60. It's a big, so I'm going to add 64 vert vertices. And I know the bowl is 140, and I'm going to make this thing about 138, so it just fits a little tighter. It's going to be printed in TPU, which is flexible and and stretchy. So it means uh, uh, 138 so my radius is 69 so that's uh, the start and then I hit tab to go into edit mode and it's there's my 64 vertices and there's a lot of ways to uh, proceed but um, I could extrude this but I'm not going to because that creates problems when you fill or, or try to bridge an edge loop um, so this is this is the most straightforward way to do it anyways I'm just going to add in edit mode I can add another uh, circle and uh, 64 vertices again but this is going to be how far the lip comes underneath which was three millimeters and it's three millimeters on each side so the radius is 16 or the, the radius I need is 69 minus 3 so, so I'm going to write 66 here and we're modeling this thing upside down that part of the profile is actually nine millimeters above the other one because the the thickness of the glass lip is nine millimeters so that's kind of where that that needs to go and that's all precise and then uh, hit alt left click on on here and it selects that entire loop or edge ring there uh, edge loop and um, I hit shift D to uh, duplicate it there it is I hit right click and it snaps back there's actually two of them now but here's the little extra table for the one I just created and I want that to be nine so you see from the side it kind of you get the, the top gonna be a one big face it's gonna go up and it's going over okay so now we just need to kinda fill these things in and it's quite easy you select that edge edge loop uh, shift alt to select that one and then edge bridge edge loops and you make those faces now do the same thing for that one and for that one and edge bridge edge loops good and then lastly select the bottom one again and just hit F for fill or I think you can go face fill oh it wants to do alt F but F is actually better uh, in this case I'll show you if you do alt F you get all these faces which is no big deal sometimes software requires that but if you just hit F you get um, what they call an ingon, which is just a big multi-sided face with no um, edges in it, no extra, um, yeah, no extra edges, no extra faces. And uh, Cura doesn't have a problem with these, or the STL exporter from Blender, anyways, doesn't have a problem with these, and it'll convert it properly. So this is sometimes just easier to work with. Okay, so now we got the basic outline. We're gonna go back to object mode, and we're gonna add thickness to it. And we do that with a modifier, all sorts of modifiers, but the one we're going to use is solidify. And we want to set a thickness of one millimeter. Now you got to figure out which way to go. So if I go positive, which is kind of intuitive, nothing happens. If I go negative, I'm dragging the mouse to the left. You can see it gets thicker on, towards the outside, which is what we want. So um, I want to use a negative number and I want to type in minus one. And that's given it some thickness. To it. Now you can see that lip, that little edge there has, has one millimeter thick. And you probably can't see it, but right there, that is not a sharp corner because of the way the solidifier works by, uh, the solidify modifier works by default. Um, so to make that a square corner, you hit this even thickness, and now that's a, a nice square corner, and we're done. So, um, 
generally eventually you apply modifiers and I'm going to do that now. If I thought I was going to have to come back and change this, like change the thickness, I wouldn't apply it because what it does is it takes the modifier away. Here I go, click it. It takes the modifiers gone now, but now this thing is actually a mesh. You see it's got the extra vertices, it's got the extra thickness, and that's what I want. Um, plus I know I'm not going to change it. So Okay, now I'm going to add this roundness. You do that with a bevel. So I'm going to select that loop and Go edge, bevel, and you move the mouse a little bit and it sort of does does that. You kind of put it where you want it. But the main thing is when you hit left click, you get this panel up. And now I can add the number of steps. You see that's changed to three. And I can make that size kind of go up just about, you can just do it by eye, just about halfway up, up that side. Because now, okay, so that one's done. Now I'm going to come in here and do that one and go edge, bevel edges, move it a little bit just to kind of get it started. And if I, w I mean, I could do it right here because it remembered the three and I, I want it to go just, just to the edge there, which is fine. Um, and I'm happy. I, and I don't need to really change anything on, on that, this one, this thing over here. So that's it. And then out and it's done. And that's the new one. There's the old one. And then to, uh, so that's totally complete. And you go File, Export, STL. That's selected. And so you hit Select Only. And it'll save only that object off to an STL file. Then you can import it directly into Cura. So that's all. Um, okay, I forgot to add, and I'm going to try to add this to the end of the video. Uh, it's, it's generally good practice in edit mode, you select everything by pressing A, and you want to do a little bit of cleanup, called cleanup. Um, sometimes you end up with multiple ver vertices, like when I, well anyways, uh, the thing is merge by distance. And if I select this, it says it says removed zero vertices. So actually I didn't have to do that, but sometimes you'll, you'll get removed 80 vertices, and so this little vertice might be two vertices that you can't you can't see because of some modeling thing you did that created two vertices in the same place and you don't need them. So it's good to remove those. And then if you look and turn on normals and you make them big, these are you want all these things facing out and right now they are. But sometimes you miss one or some of them there's a ring that's not uh, that's not correct. So what I do automatically I go f mesh normals and then recalculate outside. In this case, it didn't do anything. But if you didn't see these blue lines facing outward, some of them were facing inward. This thing makes them all face outward, and which which is what you often need for um, 3D printing. Otherwise, Cura assumes that it's like the, the thing is inside out, and things just get messed up. So that's it. And now you just export that.